Okay, let me, let me break this down and turn this into plain English. I mean, just some really simple stuff. Back, back in the late 1970s, I was doing business in Japan. Actually, it was the early 1980s. It was 83 through 86. Um, my best friend, Jerry uh, Schneiderman, and I had started a company called Langley St. Clair Instrumentation Systems, and we were importing uh, anti-radiation screen shields and low-radiation picture tubes from Japan. And so uh, my oldest daughter and I went through a class in Japanese. We studied Japanese culture. I spent a lot of time in Japan. I was doing business in Japan. Um, I, I, Ichi-san, I, and I, anyhow, I learned how to count in Japanese. <laughs> I, I learned a lot. And one of the, f and, and one of the things that I learned that, and, and in fact, I wrote a novel called The Sword of Geary, which is to this day unpublished, although Chuck Norris's production company at one point optioned it to make it into a movie, but which never happened. Uh, but one of the things that I learned was that Japanese culture is very much like most tribal societies, probably virtually all human societies at least began, and that is, it's, it's what's called an obligation culture. With Native American societies, we call them a potlatch culture. There is this thing called giri, G-I-R-I, and basically it means obligation. And there are different kinds of giri. There's a, when, when, when you give somebody a gift, you incur on, you incur this obligation, or they, you know, they incur the obligation when they accept the gift, actually. And now they have to give you back a gift. And people take this very, very seriously in Japan. They, and they very carefully calibrate. They very carefully keep track of what they've received from people so that they can give back to them. And there's this, and, and, there, and there's the various forms of giri and an and gemu uh, of obligation. Obligation to the emperor, obligation to the state, obligation to your parents, obligation to your employer, obligation to your children and spouse and family, and all these kinds of things. So it all began with obligation. Now, what you and I were taught about money in elementary school was that money started out as a medium of exchange to replace barter. It turns out this is not true. But here's the not true story that we all learned in school, that we all think we know. And that is that way back in history, long ago, uh, I was growing wheat, and Shano was growing corn, and and uh, Jim was was uh, raising chickens, and uh, Danielle was helping make houses, make huts for us to live in, and we all decided that we were going to, uh, you know, we'd meet in the marketplace, and I'd need to buy something to repair my hut. And so uh, I'd go to Danielle, but she, she was building a hut. She didn't need my wheat. She needed instead, you know, some, something else, you know. And so, and, and, and I couldn't get that with the wheat, but I could go to Jim and say, hey, Jim, can I get some chickens? Because I know that the guy who's got the stuff that Danielle needs will take a chicken for it. And, and so we had this barter economy, and it didn't work very efficiently. There's what economists call shoe leather costs associated with it. And so to get rid of those shoe leather costs, what we all did is we agreed on something as a medium of exchange. Cowrie shells or wampum beads or, or uh, uh, actually the oldest city in the world, Corral in Lima, Peru. I, I was down there a couple of years ago. We did our show from there. Uh, and I saw knots, actual knots, knotted cotton that were, that were money. And so the story goes that these represented something of value and thus could be converted into something of value. And eventually we went from using those or stone tablets or clay tablets or whatever. We took, went from those to using something that actually had intrinsic value. That would be gold or silver. And then out of that, we created paper currency to represent that. And then, um, and then we abandoned that in 71. The story is not true. What is true is that in the beginning was society. Now, the reason why the, it, you know, it, it was all about making money as a medium of exchange seems to stick is because it kind of follows the libertarian line that it was all about me trying to figure out how to sell my wheat or Shano trying to figure out how to sell his corn or whatever. I, you know, I've forgotten what I've assigned to whom. It, chickens, yeah, Jim. <laughs> but it really wasn't about enlightened self-interest or any of this libertarian baloney. 
really what it was about was society. We're a tribe. We're a community. We're a family. We're, 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 we're living here in the desert or in the jungle or in the, in the plains or wherever we are, in the city even. We're living here. And there is a cost to running our society. There are things that we have to have in common. The roads, the place where we all get together and sing, the common space. The, the, you know, the, in fact, most space, most of it was the commons. And so there has to be a way that we can support ourselves, our society, that we can basically pay our taxes so that those common structures can exist. And the way that we do that is by taking a little piece off the top of commerce. So money was invented by society, by, the gov- by our first governments, our tribes, as a way of making sure that as commerce happened, a little piece of that was supporting the commons. And that's why wampum beads aren't actually money. We completely misunderstood them. What they are is, is accounting entries. They're the same thing as right now. You know, when 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 you when you uh, you know move money from one checking account to another, you don't physically move money. You move ones and zeros and threes and fives and sevens on a computer screen. That's what wampum beads were. It was an accounting of who owed what. It all goes back to Geary. It all goes back to obligation. And the first obligation was the obligation to society. And money was created by society as a vehicle to fulfill that obligation. And then it became used by the private sector, as it were. So the first thing that we have to change is our understanding of money and what it is. And once we understand what money is, and we understand that, you know, the gold standard is irrelevant, or even going back to gold is irrelevant... Then a whole bunch of other stuff starts making sense.